from fragile 5 to top 5 indian economy is now enjoying a pedestal positioning growth is headed in the right direction inflation is coming under check npa cycle is weak and fresh capital formation has started reserve bank of india governor and his team have made the impossible look easy indian financial system is now resilient despite all the shocks but are problems of yesterday behind us or will they haunt us what about global external shocks and preparedness of indian financial system to get all these answers i have with me the man of the moment mr shakti kanta das governor of reserve bank of india governor it's an honor and the channel's pleasure to have you on eti now thank you governor i guess the introduction was the question in itself ever since you took over as the governor of reserve bank of india december 2018 is this the best macro in the economy setup we've seen yeah i think in a long time not just in the last 5 uh, years of course in the last 5 years we have seen uh, several uh, turbulent uh, moments uh, initially coming from the collapse of the you know the ilfs followed by the covid and so many other external uh, developments so we have gone through every turbulent period but i think in quite a while if you see over a period of time over a period of years i think the confluence of factors that we have today it's perhaps one of the best uh, look at the gdp you mentioned about gdp you look at uh, the fiscal consolidation which of course is on the fiscal side you look at current account deficit you look at inflation and you look at the fact that uh, inflation has been brought under some kind of a control without uh, sacrificing uh, you know without sacrificing or without paying the kind of heavy price which perhaps some of the economies have paid to bring back uh, you know to keep inflation under control so therefore if you look overall in terms of growth in terms of inflation in terms of other macro parameters like the current account deficit or the you know the uh, economic activities i think in all respects Uh, and in terms of the overall stability of the financial sector how can i miss that point in terms of overall stability of the financial sector the overall stability in the banking sector the nbfc sector i think uh, it's uh, perhaps one of the best confluence of factors but having said that this is a philosophy which we follow internally there is no room for complacency at all because uh, a problem can suddenly arise from any corner of the world and which may really you know complicate the challenges for us so absolutely no room of for complacency and we need to remain uh, focused and uh, remain committed to our goal of uh, maintaining financial stability and supporting economic activity in the country mm. but looking at the current set of data points and the macro circumstances can i say that you don't see a problem which is on the horizon if there is an external shock something unknown which we are not privy to right now that could be an episodic issue but looking at the data points and the permutation and the combination you don't have a problem on the horizon per se more or less you are right excepting that uh, geopolitical crisis new flash points can originate uh, any time there are weather related change, uh, you know weather related challenges weather events which can happen and which do happen without much advance notice excepting that uh, at a structural level i don't uh, see any major problem but as i made a reference in the last uh, mpc statement of mine i think uh, global debt it's not as it's not so much a problem in india because i think our debt to gdp is at uh, you know is at a certain level and it is expected to moderate about which i have talked about uh, in the last mpc statement and when i say our debt to gdp i mean the country's debt vis-a-vis -vis external lenders and the debt of the state and the central governments put together these are all within manageable manageable limits they are said to moderate in the coming years but if you look at uh, global uh, public debt in some of the advanced economies i think uh, you know with their large fiscal deficits and with their large uh, you know percentage of uh, borrowing with the with the large percentage of debt to gdp ratios and if this continues it could it can pose uh, you know it can uh, sort of uh, pose bigger challenges 
uh, particularly to the emerging market uh, economies. But that is not something which will affect India immediately. And also, I think among all emerging market economies, India is much, much, I am repeating the word much mm -hmm. consciously, I think India is much better prepared to deal with such challenges. Mm -hmm. Governor, the Reserve Bank of India was clearly ahead of the curve when they released their GDP projections for FI24. RBI number was 7. The consensus number was 6.3, 6.4. Post the last GDP trend, will RBI remain ahead of the curve and upgrade their FI25 GDP estimates also? Is there a case for it? Well, I mean, the next monetary policy is just about a month away. And uh, our research teams are working on the uh, you know, on the inflation and the, on the GDP numbers. So I don't want to preempt what conclusions they will come up with. But as I look at, uh, you know, the uh, outlook for growth, uh, we said last year, if I recall, sometime in October, towards the end of October, uh, I had said in one event that uh, the GDP is expected to touch and perhaps it will touch, uh, it will be in the order of 7%. You are right, absolutely. The market was at 6.3, 6.5, and slowly the market adjusted to that. But today, the number for the current year given out is 7.6%. Uh, and uh, so now, once the NSO gives a particular data, we work on that number. I mean, because that is the final authority which gives the uh, GDP number. Uh, so far as, uh, let me put, split it this way. First, let me talk of the current year, then the next year. So far as current year is concerned, the momentum of economic activity has been very good, has been robust. And we are now in the first week of March. Uh, given the kind of momentum of economic activity, the momentum, the growth momentum which uh, we are witnessing, and the kind of high frequency indicators, the data points which we keep getting on a continuous basis, I would not hesitate to say that uh, there is every possibility of uh, the 7.6 percent growth for the current year being exceeded. Now, we have the numbers for the first three quarters. The implicit growth for the Q4, for the fourth quarter, that is current, current quarter, is 5.9 percent. Our sense and understanding of the high frequency indicators and the momentum of economic activity tells us that this 5.9 percent growth in the Q4 could be exceeded. And when that happens, obviously, the growth will be more than 7.6%. And I think there is quite a good chance of the growth so GDP number for the current year being very close to 8%. Now, coming to next year, we have given a growth projection of uh, 7%. Uh, other uh, forecasters, including international agencies, have given much lower uh, projections for next year. For next year, we stick to 7%, at, you know, we are sticking to 7%. But concerned. I will wait for the next MPC, you know, our research teams to do their analysis. But at the moment, as I speak to you, I would uh, stick to 7%, which we have projected for next year. But sir, if high frequency data points are so strong, then internal data purely is pointing towards a strong economic, you know, expansion. Can I at least infer that? There is definitely a strong economic expansion. You see, you take uh, 2021, which was the COVID year, when we had a negative growth. Thereafter, the revised number which NSO has given out is 9.7% for 21-22. Then the next year, which was earlier 7.2, has been revised slightly downwards to 7%. And this year, NSO is giving 7.6%. So 9.7%. 7 and 7.6. If you take the average, it's 8%. Yes. And uh, so, and the 7.6 can be closer to 8%. 8 so therefore, the momentum is continuing to be very strong. And uh, so therefore, uh, we are quite optimistic uh, about next year. And we are quite, uh, and I say it with reasonable amount of uh, confidence based on our internal analysis and research, uh, that 7% next year is uh, definitely very much on the table. You know, when the Reserve Bank of India makes a comment, he knows the data, and he's gone through the data, and he's sure, otherwise he will never indicate that on a public forum. Governor, last time when we spoke, the elephant in the room, in a sense, was inflation. Now inflation has come down. A lot of measures have been taken by RBI. Commodity prices have also been benign. 
Now that inflation is moving towards your guided band, which is below 5%, more towards 4%, is it time for Reserve Bank of India to change their stance? Since you use the word, uh, you, you use the analogy of elephant, I would like to tell you and to your viewers that as it looks, the elephant has gone for a walk. Okay. The elephant can come back anytime. And why I am saying the elephant can come back anytime? Because there are a couple of major uncertainties which I mentioned. One is the uh, geopolitical, you know, how the geopolitical situation evolves, uh, what kind of supply, you know, supply chain challenges it will pose. And second thing is the weather-related events, which immediately impact our food prices. So these are, these are the two major uncertainties. And uh, the latest growth, the latest inflation print, which we have for the month of uh, uh, January, that was released in the month of February, the inflation was 5.1%. We are still 110 basis points away from our target of 4%. We are completely focused. We are analyzing all the incoming data to see the you know, outlook on inflation. But having said that, let me say that uh, the trend, the direction of inflation, it is not just the month on month or the monthly numbers. It is also the direction on which the inflation numbers are evolving. Uh, immediately after the Ukraine war, the inflation was 7.8%. That was in 22 April. From 7.8, it has come down to 5.1. In between it, you know, it touched 4%, it touched uh, below 5%, but uh, it's now at 5.1%. So we are now focused on taking inflation to the target of 4%, and that is our focus. And given the uncertainties that uh, we have, I mentioned weather-related uh, events and all, we would like, uh, you know, inflation to be sort of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, inflation to sort of durably be around 4%. It cannot be just one-off mm -hmm. number or just one month number touching 4%, which will give us the satisfaction. It has to be sort of sustainably and durably at around uh, 4%. That is something which will give us greater confidence. But the direction is very clear. Inflation is on a downward uh, trajectory. Mm -hmm. So if I have to use the cricket terminology with you, you always refer to cricket. Uh, Post-war, RBI had no option but to adopt a T20 format. They had to go for speed and power and impact. Are we back to the classic test match style now, where it is about uh, form and not speed, it is about style and durability and sustenance? So we play ball by ball. <laughs> I mean, again, using a cricket analogy, we play ball by ball. And even in T20, for your, you know, for information, if you see the pattern of T20, around the, you know, around the 10th to 13th, 14th over, usually there is a kind of a slight moderation in the pace, usually. Yes. But on a more serious note, uh, yes, at that time, uh, you know, uh, front-ended action was required and we took the front-ended action including a off-cycle meeting which we held of the MPC yes. in May of mm -hmm. 2022 where we announced a repo rate increase of uh, 40 basis points. The market was taken by surprise but I was surprised because if you read uh, that April, 20, uh, if you read the April 22 MPC statement, we had given clear, clear indications mm -hmm. that you know we will be moving very fast. But that is all history. So that was a time when front-ended action had to be taken. And now for several meetings, it's a pause, both in terms of stance and in terms of uh, the rate increase or, I mean, on the rate front. So we are watching the numbers, incoming data points with regard to prices. We make our evaluation of the, you know, the evolving outlook. Based on that, the future action will be decided. Mm. Governor, what is RBI's view on the state of the economy? All kind of alphabets have been attributed to describe the post-COVID recovery. Is the post-COVID recovery really unreal? Is there stress on rural economy and do you see that changing? No, I think overall the economy is doing very well. I just mentioned last three years, the average, including current year, mm -hmm. the average growth is 8%. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't reach 8% growth, uh, you know, just like that. And even for the number which has now been given out, uh, 7.6 for the current year, now various theories are being uh, given around. 
uh, I'm not dismissing the analysis which is being uh, explained. For example, there is a belief that the, because the subsidy expenditure has come down, so GVA plus your uh, GVA plus tax, uh, gross tax collections minus subsidy, because the subsidies are less, so therefore the GDP number is looking uh, high. I mean, various explanations are given. But I would again like to go back to what I mentioned about the momentum. The momentum of economic activity continues to be strong. And the demand for, in the rural sector, you mentioned, you mentioned about the rural sector. Now, the demand for two-wheelers, which is an indicator for, uh, you know, rural demand. Two-wheeler demand has, is again back, uh, you know, it's recording mm -hmm. high growth for last uh, couple of months. Tractor demand is slower, yeah. but the point is tractor demand is little slower. It's not negative. It's the growth mm -hmm. is little less compared to the previous months, but on the back of double-digit growth for several months, a slight moderation should not be seen as, a, as an indication of slowing rural demand. It's not so. So therefore, two-wheeler demand continues to be strong. Tractor demand is quite uh, stable. And uh, then uh, the demand for uh, Mahatma Gandhi Narega, that also has come down. Rabi, we initiate, you know, the rubby sort of whatever gap was there in the net sown area, that has also been filled up. And rubby crop is expect, expected to be good. A wheat crop is expected to exceed last year. But then we have challenges with regard to a few other crops like pulses, etc. So overall, rural demand is showing signs of revival or perhaps, let me put it this way, that rural demand has definitely improved compared to what it was, let's say, one year ago. And so far as urban demand is concerned, urban demand continues to be very strong. Investment activity continues to be strong, driven by government capex and, uh, you know, private capex is also beginning to pick up, particularly in certain key sectors like steel, those sectors related to construction activity, textiles, chemicals, so private investment is also picking up. Capacity utilization is also very high, and this is not just reflective in RBI's survey, but also in the various industry associations and chambers of commerce. They do a survey among their members. Yesterday we had a detailed interaction with uh, various industry and uh, trade bodies and the apex associations at the, you know, the All India Associations. So their internal survey among their members is also showing that the capacity utilization is very high. And there is an expectation that private investment will also pick up. Demand for bank credit has also picked up. So if you put all these things together, I think the economy is doing definitely, uh, you know, the economy is doing very well. And uh, compare ourselves among the other countries. You know, we are living in a world and we, it's always, you have to see it in a comparative sense. If today we are recording, let's say, around, you know, 7.6 or between 7.6 and 8% growth, please see where the other countries are. If other countries were doing 9 and 10% growth and we are still at 8 or little below 8, it's not good. But look at the other countries. So therefore, I think the economy is doing very well. And we are quite optimistic about the outlook, uh, the growth outlook uh, for India. Mm. I'd like to draw your attention to liquidity. Uh, given the growth parameters and the inflation and the growth dynamic, is the system now ready for liquidity injection? Because liquidity on a net basis in last uh, 24 months is actually less. Is the system now ready to accept that backing? You see, liquidity was in surplus till about uh, September or so, September last yeah. year. Thereafter, it has become, uh, it has turned into deficit. And there are various factors external to the Reserve Bank. That is ex external factors. External meaning, I don't mean foreign, but external to the RBI. For example, the currency in circulation, it plays a, you know, it plays an important role in uh, deciding the quantum of, in impacting the quantum of liquidity. The currency in circulation, uh, government expenditure, and uh, the inflow of uh, forex. When foreign exchange comes in, then obviously, you know, it all. these are the factors which are extraneous to the, uh, external to the RBI. So we have been, as I said in my, as we pointed out in the last monetary policy statement, we have been quite nimble in our uh, liquidity actions. 
we are almost simultaneously during the last fortnight or one month we are injecting liquidity by way of variable rate repo operations we are also periodically taking out liquidity by way of variable rate reverse repo auction so it is both both v double r and v triple r in fact uh, last few days or last few weeks we have been doing more than one auction on the same day so that is the kind of nimbleness which we have demonstrated to manage uh, liquidity but for the last uh, four weeks or so i think liquidity has been uh, you know liquidity has been in uh, surplus and that is reflective in the fact that the overnight call rates uh, call money rates the overnight call rates which were earlier hovering around 6.75 to even sometimes touching 6.8 they came down to about 6.6 or so 6.6 6.7 and yesterday in fact it was below 6.5 so therefore liquidity has been sort of there is there is sort of adequate amount of liquidity there is good amount of liquidity in the system it's not deficit and that is clearly reflected in the overnight uh, call rates paytm i would like to again establish for our viewers what a channel view has been that reserve bank of india has acted in public interest to safeguard public interest when it comes to paytm the framework was compromised and reserve bank of india had no choice but to impose restrictions governor that's one month old after that has paytm taken corrective action, uh, action have they earned the out of jail card could there be a review to that decision no i don't want to comment on a specific entity it will not be proper now for me to comment on a specific entity because uh, we have you know there is there is correspondence going on between uh, rbi and the <coughs> regulated entity in this case it is the paytm which you have mentioned so specifics of where it stands i would not like to uh, mention but since you mentioned paytm uh, can i sort of slightly expand the scope yes, of uh, my reply yes, and bring in a few things which i think perhaps uh, you know there would be interest among your uh, viewers first point i want to say is that the reserve bank's action is against a regulated entity in this case the regulated entity is a payment bank the reserve bank's action is not against any fintech company i fail to understand i do not see any reason why a narrative is you know building up or was built up as if reserve bank has taken some measures against fintech companies we have not taken any action against any fintech companies fintech companies are not regulated by the reserve bank unless they are nbfc lenders if they are nbfc lenders yes they are regulated by us in this case the action is against uh, a payment bank now you may say that ki i am being trite uh, defensive and all mm. that it's not being defensive at all but i think uh, i see this kind of narrative in you know in certain sections of the media but i think the financial sector players they understand the situation very well but for the understanding of the you know wider uh, uh, cross section of your viewers so therefore we have done nothing so far as fintechs are concerned fintechs are free to grow we are supporting fintech companies we have set up an innovation hub we have formed a fintech department we have a regulatory sandbox we have uh, we are going towards you know forming a what do you call a sro a self regulatory organization for uh, fintechs so rbi is and remains fully supportive of fintechs i am saying this only to sort of give a message of you know to sort of instill a sense of clarity in the minds of the people and on the fintech players the rbi is all for fintech uh, to grow so far as rbi's regulated entities as concerned fintechs provide a third party service mm -hmm. yes. so as a third party service provider so far as we are concerned it is upon we fix the responsibility on the bank or the nbfc which is utilizing the services of fintech to follow the rules of the game and uh, so that is what one point which i wanted to clarify and financial sector when you come to a regulated uh, environment regulated environment is a regulated environment there are regulations there are rules of the game and you have to follow the rules of the game if you want to drive a new fashionable car on the road you have to follow the traffic rules you cannot say that you know i am the owner of a new car 
and uh, I don't, uh, you know, traffic rules don't apply to us. Traffic rules are for everybody. And why are traffic rules put in place? Because there are children crossing the road, there are elderly people using the road, there are two wheelers on the road, there are cars of various speeds on the road. So therefore, it is the responsibility of the traffic police to ensure that there are no accidents. So Reserve Bank is similarly placed as a regulator, which is in entrusted with the responsibility of regulating large part of the financial sector. Our endeavor is to ensure, in the, to the best of our ability, our endeavor is to ensure that there are no major accidents. Accidents can still happen, mm -hmm. but our endeavor is to ensure that there are no major accidents. Therefore, we have now deepened our supervision to the extent that we are able to sort of anticipate problems and risk build up. All our actions are determined with the objective of maintaining financial stability, protecting customers' interest, protecting depositors' interest, and wherever we see a risk building up, we have to necessarily take action in the overall public interest. So this is the overall background for all the regulatory actions which the Reserve Bank has taken, in the, not only in the case of the Paytm, but in the case of a few other regulated entities. Whenever we take action, it is mainly, you know, you have to see from where we are coming. Mm -hmm. But just a point on public awareness. I'm Sorry for that very no, long No, no, sir. Answer. Thank you for clarification. Uh, just a follow-up question for public awareness. Are you likely to extend the deadline of 15 March for Paytm wallet just because of the kind of, uh, you know, accounts and the pure size it has? You see, initially when we gave a time of about a month, 31st January we issued these orders and we gave time up to end of February, which were 29th, yes. 29th February. So we had made an assessment and we, uh, you know, our understanding was that it will take about 30 days, uh, you know, for the whole thing to stabilize. Then we issued a FAQ, as I mentioned uh, in the Monetary Policy Day. We issued an FAQ, I think sometime around 16th, in the middle of uh, February. So therefore, we thought since the FAQ is being issued in the middle of February, uh, giving clarity on a number of issues, number of questions which we had received. So we thought it is again appropriate to give one more month of time. In our assessment, the time given up to 15th February is sufficient. 15th March. Sorry, 15th March, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Up to 15th March is sufficient mm -hmm. because, you see, if you take into account the total number of, uh, you know, uh, users of the Paytm, you are referring to the mm -hmm. Paytm, Paytm payment wallet. The yes. wallet, yes. the payment yes. app. Yes. Now, each payment app or wallet is linked to a bank account. Every, you know, with payment app, whether you are, you know, Paytm app or any other mm -hmm. app, or the wallet is linked to a bank account. So far as Paytm is concerned, large part of their, uh, you know, uh, large part of the users of the Paytm payment app, almost to the extent of about 80 to 85 percent, they are linked to other banks along with Paytm bank or to entirely different banks. So therefore, about 80 to 85 percent of the customers who are using the Paytm payment app will not be impacted at all because their app is also linked to another bank account of theirs. So therefore, their payments can go on in a non-disruptive manner. The challenge is with regard to those 15 or 20 percent of the users who have linkage only with a bank account in the Paytm payment bank. There, we have advised the company that is the, you know, Paytm payment bank has been advised to sort of shift these customers to other banks. Other banks are also proactively onboarding customers. And uh, NPCI has also been sort of uh, working closely with uh, the various banks. So customers are now sort of uh, who are exclusively dependent on payment bank, you know, 15 to 20 percent of the customers, they are getting onboarded to other banks. So therefore, I don't foresee a problem beyond uh, 15th March and through your channel I would like to sabko mein, aap, Hindi mein bhi right, bol deta hu, right, right. I would like to appeal to everybody main sabko, sab users ko ye kehna chata hu ki 15 March se pehle aap dousre koi bank mein aapka jo Paytm app hai usko link kar lijiye if you have a payment uh, app Paytm payment app link to only PT, Paytm payment bank please link it to another bank account of yours in some other bank so that aapka jo Paytm payment bank hai 
पेटीएम पेमेंट ऐप है वो नॉन डिसरप्टिवली आप उसको यूज कर सकते हैं बट वेन डू थिंक एन पी सी आई विल टेक अ डिसीजन ऑन पेटीएम लाइसेंस I can't say that. I mean, NPCI. We are. I mean, we, mm-hmm. I, I, I know the process. Mm-hmm. NPCI has to do its internal due diligence. Mm-hmm. So far as RBI is concerned, we have advised that we have we have informed them that uh, we have no objection if NPCI considers, uh, you know, the Paytm payment app to continue because our action was against the Paytm payment mm-hmm. bank. The app is not, uh, you yes. know, it's with the NPCI. Yes. So our action was against the payment bank. Mm. NPCI will take a call. I would presume they will take a call. Mm. Uh, I think they should be taking a call shortly. Mm. Kamala, to quote uh, your last interview, you said that fintechs are like Ferrari. India needs still a efficient small car. So can I assume that now that you know SROs have been uh, uh, SROs have been set up? RBI is essentially looking at extending the regulation in fintech the soft touch era is over if i can digress a little bit <laughs> you know i think the indian speed today is not like a small car right india's economic growth and the way india is growing i think it is the tejas speed <laughs> the tejas aircraft speed right, right. i think uh, uh, you know we are experiencing uh, but coming back specifically to this uh, question uh you said that uh, is the soft touch era over ha huh, i mean we don't want to slow down any mm. economic growth mm. we don't want to slow down the growth of the financial sector mm. we are completely focused on the growth of a robust financial sector the growth of the financial sector on a sustainable basis you see growth has to be sustainable in the long run if you grow at a very high speed just for a few years and then if you there is a crash yes. that's not on as a regulator of the financial sector it's our effort it's our responsibility to ensure that the financial sector grows and grows you know in a good with a good speed but in a sustainable manner so therefore in the recent uh, years we have uh, uh you know we have deepened our supervisory processes and approaches and uh, we are now keeping a very close watch on activities of uh, you know not only sectoral subsectoral activities but also we are monitoring the activities of uh, the individual banks or the individual nbfcs the larger ones particularly let's say the top uh, 100 nbfcs which control roughly about uh, 80 to 90% of the nbfc uh, space so the monitoring the supervision is now much more active on the regulatory side we have completely overhauled the regulatory architecture in the sense that for nbfcs we have positioned a scale based regulation we have digital lending guidelines we have issued ownership guidelines as well as governance guidelines for scheduled commercial banks so therefore we have brought in lot of changes in the regulatory side to ensure that our financial sector remains strong and healthy and on the supervision side also we have deepened our supervision to the extent that we constantly monitor what's happening both through offline methods as well as you know through offsite as well as onsite methods including lot of online information which we get to ensure that the indian financial sector again as i mentioned mm. uh, remains strong and healthy and grows in a sustainable manner mm. but governor uh, looking at ai better compliance can i say that compliance now will occupy center stage and reserve bank of india in a sense could also revisit the total total penalty which is there in the system which currently um, is actually minuscule considering the global standards for non compliance you see three principles which we highlight in fact you can call them the tripod of uh, stability in any financial institution the tripod of stability is management of risk is ensuring good compliance ensuring reasonable compliance and the third aspect is taking the internal audit seriously making the internal audit functions uh, you know very sort of uh, making that efficient and that is why as a part of our governance reforms in uh, banks and nbfcs we have mandated creation of dedicated senior level positions of chief risk officer 
to look after risk management, chief risk officer, chief compliance officer, and the head of internal audit. All these three functions, we have spelt out what are the areas they should be looking at. We have, you know, we have sort of mandated that there should be sufficiently senior officers having the required capability. So therefore, ultimately, compliance is an essential part of good governance. And, uh, the, you know, from the Reserve Bank, we are giving a lot of emphasis on these three things, risk management, compliance, and the findings of the internal audit, how they are being addressed. Mm. Governor, there is a war of liability within banks right now. And banks, in a sense, are making a case that, look, we are not getting traditional savings because a lot of money is being channelized to stock markets. As RBI, is, what is your view? Is our savings rating diverted into stock markets? You see, I'll tell you, this, this, the whole position is slightly nuanced. If savings are going into stock markets, it's coming back to a bank. Hmm. You see, when you buy a stock, yeah. <laughs> you know, let us say if I am buying some shares hmm. in the secondary market or in the, I participate in an IPO, I make the payment. Hmm. But where does that money go? It doesn't remain as hmm. loose cash. It goes back, you know, it comes back to the banking system in somebody else's mm. banking, uh, somebody else's bank account. So therefore, yes, from the point of view of the banks, one set of deposits, you know, one set of depositors probably, their deposit rates are coming down in another category of deposit. The money is shifting from mm. one account to the other account. But having said that, I think the broader point which you are making and which I quite agree is that the growth of deposits is in the order of about, uh, you know, the growth rate of deposits yes. is in the order of about 12%. Uh, yes. uh, whereas credit is growing at about 16 to 17%. So there is a kind of a, uh, there's a kind of a mismatch. There will always be a mismatch because, uh, you know, uh, it's not that you get 100 rupees by deposit and the same 100 alone will be given out as, out as loan. And out of that 100, incidentally, the bank has to provide for CRR and SLR and other requirements. So, but when one loan gets sanctioned, money creates money, what is called the money multiplier. So therefore, while the credit growth cannot be sort of, uh, you cannot have a, uh, you know, you cannot say that uh, credit cannot grow at a rate higher than the deposit growth. It will always grow yes. at a rate higher than the deposit mm -hmm. growth. Yes. But the, there has to be some correlation mm -hmm. between credit growth and uh, deposit mm -hmm. growth. Now, the deposits uh, growth uh, are in the region of about 12 to 13 percent. And uh, historically, I think uh, uh, the deposit uh, deposits have grown around 13, 14 percent. So, Yes, to some extent, I think uh, there has been some dip in deposits, perhaps because, uh, you know, perhaps because uh, I think uh, the propensity to spend more is now there. You know, people, consumption expenditure is, I think, picking up. But eventually that money comes back again to somebody else's bank account. So as economic growth takes a greater uh, foothold, I think one can expect the savings rate uh, to improve. Is if, the, uh, if retail savings are sorry to yeah. say, if retail savings are not uh, growing, it's perhaps because of uh, you know things like investment in mutual mm -hmm. funds, investment in uh, shares, or greater amount of uh, you know spending, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know undertaken by the households. Mm -hmm. But is RBI worried about the kind of options activity which are there in the system, loan against securities? Is that something which is a bit of a fly in the ointment? Is it a concern? You see, loans against securities, we have, uh, the RBI has given guidelines to banks and uh, NBFCs also. Even with regard to NBFCs uh, financing IPOs, uh, two years ago we came out with some guidelines. Earlier the NBFCs could give any amount of loan, uh, you know, with regard to IPO financing. But we have set a limit. I think we have set a limit of one crore. Mm -hmm. One crore per uh, borrower, we have set a limit. So therefore, that is one area we are where we are constantly monitoring. Like any other sector, these are all under our constant uh, monitoring. And as and when some action is required, we will take them. But at the moment, uh, uh, it's uh, sort of under our surveillance. Uh, and uh, I mean, that's it. I don't want to add What about real estate? In the past, Reserve Bank of India has flagged off uh, 
concerns in the real, real estate sector in the previous cycle, they have taken preemptive measures. Uh, where do you see the real estate sector is headed? Are you worried? You see, at the moment, I'm not uh, unduly concerned about uh, real estate sector as a whole. Construction activity continues to be strong. And the real estate number may look high because of the fact that the HDFC's uh, assets got merged with the HDFC bank. So both put together, if you compare year-on-year -year basis, the real estate sector growth looks high. But if you net out the HDFC component, then the growth of real estate sector is uh, not something which uh, uh, worries us at this point of time. Uh, Near-term question, Governor, bond inclusion. India will be part of uh, you know, MSCI index. Bond inflows will pick up. How is Reserve Bank of India preparing uh, the bond market for the inflows? You see, bond market inclusion, I have said it earlier, it can act as a you know, double-edged uh, weapon. If there, are can, if there are inflows, there can be situations where there are outflows also, and that can cause volatility in the yields. But uh, if you are alluding to uh, expectation of heavy inflows, uh, I would like to uh, say that uh, so far as JP Morgan include bond index inclusion or yesterday's announcement by mm -hmm. Bloomberg, Bloomberg thing will come in any case mm -hmm. at, a, you know, it's, we are still about a year away mm -hmm. from that. But this will come in, uh, you know, over a period mm -hmm. of time. They are not going to come at uh, one, you know, in one shot. They will come over a period of time. And uh, that kind of inflow the Reserve Bank will be able to manage, not only with regard to the inflows, but also should the cycle turn. I'm saying should. It's not a sort of, uh, it's not a probability, but you cannot rule out such a such scenario. So Reserve Bank will be able to handle the kind of inflows or outflows uh, that uh, one can generally associate with uh, bond inclusion mainly because uh, we have strong buffer of forex reserves. I'll take the liberty of just asking a few questions. Shamelessly, I'm extending my appointment with you. It's a rare pleasure to have you, sir. Two large questions which will have real long-term structural implications, Governor. First is that the rupee trade, in a sense, Governor is now trading, is uh, now becoming bigger. In fact, we understand that Indian refineries is also now ready to get uh, oil in part payment is going in Indian rupee. Do you see that change increasing and do you see now the rupee denominated trade will only grow exponentially? You see, rupee denominated trade, uh, one has to understand why we are doing it. Now, dependence on one currency for international trade obviously is, uh, you know, involves a bigger amount of uh, risk. When your, you know, when your import and export or when your global, you know, international trade is dependent on more than one currency, to that extent, the risk of exchange rate fluctuation in that single currency, it gets minimized. We have made a beginning with regard to rupee, uh, you know, uh, rup that is the local currency settlement or the rupee denominated settlement. There are two different mm -hmm. things. One is through the Vostro account mechanism where the settlement is entirely uh, through rupees. The other one is local currency denominated, meaning if there are two countries, the respective currencies can be utilized for uh, settlement. So therefore, our effort is mainly in that kind of uh, environment, you know, it's, it's in that kind of a context. Particularly, we are trying to build it up with countries with which we have a large uh, trade uh, uh, volume. So therefore, we expect uh, this to steadily improve. It cannot happen overnight. We expect it uh, to steadily improve. Uh, our officials have had meetings with the oil companies, oil marketing companies also. And uh, the effort on both sides, whether it is the, uh, you know, we have signed the agreement with the India UAE, uh, you will very soon see action with a few other countries also of, uh, you know, India and the other country, uh, local currency denominated uh, trade agreements being uh, sort of taken forward. So we are working in that direction and uh, I expect it uh, to grow. The rupee footprint uh, should grow, especially vis-a-vis -vis the countries with which we have a uh, uh, larger amount of trade and where there are, you know, countries from which we have great amount of remittances also by, you know, Indians who are uh, working there. Uh, you've called a cryptocurrency dangerous. And there's a time when the cryptocurrency was almost like a mania. Now that 
crypto and Bitcoin prices are coming higher. Do you see the level of participation is still low or level of participation off late after the price hike has also come back again in India? I think the exuberance which was there earlier two years ago, that exuberance is not there. There is, there is greater awareness among, uh, you know, among the people about the risks and dangers associated with uh, crypto. Some people will make money, but larger number of people are likely to incur loss because it's a speculative product. We have nothing against the technology. The, there has to be a clear line drawn between technology on which cryptocurrencies are based. Technology is the blockchain technology. We have nothing against it. Blockchain has got many applications. It's already under use. We are ourselves using the blockchain technology with regard to our central bank uh, digital currency. So the underlying technology is a different, you know, it's a, it's a different thing altogether that has to grow. We are ourselves using it in our central bank digital currency, the e-rupee. It is the, when that technology is used to develop certain products which are essentially speculative in nature and which are traded without any underlying and without any corresponding liability. You know, every asset has to have a yeah, matching, you know, liability. Now, cryptocurrencies do not have whose liability it is, number one. Number two, there is no underlying. And it is a speculative product because without any underlying, some trading is going on. You know, it, uh, I sell you something for 1,000, you sell it to somebody for 2,000, somebody sends it to, sells it to another person for 3,000. But what is the basis? So therefore, we call it a speculative product. And uh, I think there is greater awareness among the people, not only in India, but uh, internationally. And uh, I, we have interaction with other central banks also very frequently. And uh, there is greater awareness. Yes, today at the moment, as you said, some of these products are, you know, they have again, they're uh, uh, sort of being traded at very high prices. And uh, so there could be some amount of uh, interest, which is perhaps more than what it was one year ago. But if you compare with where, where we were two years ago, when there was a kind of a exuberance building up, I think today there is a greater amount of realism. Mm. Uh, last but one question. When should we expect the full-fledged launch of the digital currency, retail digital currency? You see, we are in no great hurry to launch uh, the digital currency because we want to be absolutely sure about the safety and robustness and the integrity of the digital currency. So it's a pilot project which we are running. And even the pilot project size itself we have, you know, is now very high. The number of users, retail users of uh, CBDC uh, today is about uh, 4.3 million. That's about 43 lakh users of retail CBDC are there. And there are the number of merchants who are using CBDC are about uh, 0.4 million, 40 lakhs. So totally 47 lakh, uh, you know, merchants and users are a part of this, uh, you know, the pilot project. We are learning from our experience, new challenges, new issues keep coming up, cropping up, both with regard to technology, with regard to certain, uh, sometimes certain safety, certain questions around mm -hmm. the safety features, certain questions about the speed of uh, transactions. So it's a kind of a, we are developing the product ourselves. And uh, we want to ensure that when we are fully satisfied about the integrity and about the uh, safety and the, you know, the, all the safety features and the integrity of the currency when we are absolutely confident that perhaps will be the right time to launch it uh, in a full-fledged manner. But we have no timeline, no, no target date. It all depends on how, when we feel that, yes, we are ready to uh, sort of uh, launch it. Uh, so there is no downtime in RBI, but is there a downtime in RBI governor's life? Do you ever get a Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think it's a part of the job and I'm not, uh, compl I can't complain. I mean, if you have accepted a position, you have to also accept the challenges which uh, are associated with it. And I'm sure when you get a chance to watch TV, you prefer watching ET now? Sorry? When you get a chance to watch TV, you prefer watching ET now on TV? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you want me to endorse it now? <laughs> I will not endorse it. But yes, I do watch it now, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, Governor, uh, if a pantheon of uh, great thinkers and great governors has to be made, your name will always be then on the pedestal. It's a very proud moment for us when there is global acknowledgement as to kind of, uh, you know, kind of things which under your leadership, RBI has an institution adopted. But sir, you come, unlike your peers, not from traditional economics background. Yet you are, we are living in a complex world. How do you simplify things? How do you start? How do you judge? What data points do you refer to? You see, one has to first and foremost, one has to look at the big picture. You have to see the larger world. You have to first see the big picture. And then you have to zero in into the micro details and the, you know, the, you have to have, do a kind of a granular analysis. So as long as your, uh, you know, as long as your eyes are like, you know, Arjuna's eye. <laughs> I mean, one cannot emulate uh, the great uh, warrior Arjuna, but as long as you're, you know, you see the larger picture, as long as you are focused on the larger picture, what is the larger picture for RBI? The larger picture is to ensure financial stability in the country and to support growth and also of late things like uh, supporting innovation, supporting technology, making payments, uh, you know, user friendly and uh, financial inclusion, all those things. So one has to really look at the larger picture, look at the larger picture and then I think zero in on uh, various, uh, you know, components of it and decide your action accordingly. Brindley sir, you've just given us the framework and you know we have a lot of 18 or Swadesh audience also so in Hindi. If I ask a question Governor, first of all, everyone wants to know Hindi audience that when will the price of the Home loan, car loan, personal loan, the price of the price is being made. Everyone says that the price of the Reserve Bank of India is in the hands of the Reserve Bank of India. No, look, the price is very low. The price is not the price, I don't want to say that. The price is very low. एक टाइम यूक्रेन वॉर के बाद में था जबकि हमारा इन्फ्लेस 7.8 परसेंट टच कर रहा था आज के तारीख में जो लास्ट नंबर आया है वो 5.1 परसेंट है और जो डायरेक्शन है वो कम होता जा रहा है तो हम अभी धीरे धीरे 4 परसेंट के और बढ़ रहे हैं और हमारा एक्सपेक्टेशन ये है कि 4 परसेंट हम पहुँच जाएंगे अगले शायद कुछ महीने में और हमने जो प्रोजेक्शन दिया है अगले साल के लिए अगले साल के बीच में हम चार परसेंट टच कर रहे हैं लेकिन फिर ये इन्फ्लेशन बढ़ने का चांस है और हमारा अभी जो कोशिश है अभी ये हमारा प्रयत्न है कि ये हमारा कोशिश है कि इन्फ्लेशन मतलब चार परसेंट पे पहुंच जाए और उसी के आसपास रहे और ये हमारा टारगेट है तो उसके मद्देनज़र हम इंटरेस्ट रेट डिसाइड करते हैं इन्फ्लेशन के हिसाब से और इंटरेस्ट रेट जो है वो डिपॉजिटर के लिए है वो बोरोर के लिए भी है डिपॉजिटर के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू में अगर इन्फ्लेशन बहुत ज़्यादा है बहुत अधिक है और आप इंटरेस्ट रेट कम कर रहे हैं तो डिपॉजिटर के लिए वो नेगेटिव इंटरेस्ट रेट बन जाता है लेकिन हमेशा बोरोर्स चाहते हैं कि मतलब इंटरेस्ट रेट कम हो वो बोरो करें और जो बिजनेस कर रहा है उनके बिजनेस और अच्छा चले जो प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल है वो ये चाहते हैं कि भाई कम इंटरेस्ट रेट में मैं हाउसिंग लोन लूँ या कार लोन लूँ तो ये जो है एक बैलेंस्ड कॉल हम लेते हैं और ये पूरा डिपेंड करता है आपका जो इन्फ्लेशन नंबर के ऊपर आज के तारीख में कुछ अनसर्टेंटीज़ है जैसे कि वेदर रिलेटेड इवेंट कभी मान लीजिए बाढ़ आ गई या कभी मान लीजिए अनसीजनल बारिश बहुत ज़्यादा हो गया है और कभी जैसे कि दो साल पहले हुआ था जब गेहूं का मतलब वो हार्वेस्टिंग पहुंच रहे थे एक्सट्रीम हीट समर सीजन जो है तापमान बहुत बढ़ गया था इसीलिए व्हीट क्रॉप डैमेज हो गया था और इन्फ्लेशन फिर बढ़ गया था तो इसीलिए फूड इन्फ्लेशन में आज के तारीख में हमको कुछ अनसर्टेंटी दिख रहे हैं अभी हम पाँच परसेंट के आसपास से हम चार परसेंट के पास पहुंचने का हम ये यू नो एफर्ट इज टू मतलब हमारा कोशिश ये है कि चार परसेंट पर कितना जल्द हो सके वहाँ पर पहुँच जाए और अगर चार के आसपास हम पहुँच गए और उधर ये टिक के रहता है तो उस टाइम पे अगर आप ये सवाल मेरे को पूछेंगे शायद मैं और डेफिनेटिवली इसका रिप्लाई दे सकता हूं लेकिन आज के तारीख में बस मैं दो शब्द कहना चाह दो सेंटेंस कहना चाहता हूं एक कि इंटरेस्ट 
जो मतलब इन्फ्लेशन जो है वो कम होता जा रहा है और एक्सपेक्टेशन यही है कि ये कम होगा चार परसेंट पे पहुंचेगा और फिर उसके बाद हमको देखना पड़ेगा कि वहाँ टिक के रहता है या वो फिर बढ़ने लगता है ये है फर्स्ट पॉइंट सेकेंड पॉइंट है जब हम वहाँ पहुँच जाएंगे फिर मैं आपको बताऊंगा कि हम तब टी खेलेंगे या वन डे खेलेंगे या टेस्ट मैच खेलेंगे तो वहाँ कब तक पहुँचेंगे अब देखते हैं हमने अगले साल के लिए प्रोजेक्शन दिए हैं मिडिल ऑफ नेक्स्ट ईयर 4 परसेंट टच करके फिर लेकिन उसके बाद बढ़ रहा है 4.7 परसेंट बढ़ रहा है तो ये जो है देखिए हम आउटलुक बेसिस पे डिसाइड करते हैं मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी जो है वो फॉरवर्ड लुकिंग है एक साल के बाद छः महीने आठ महीने के बाद क्या होने वाला है उसके जो असेसमेंट जो उसका करते हैं उसके बेसिस पर हम डिसीजन लेते हैं तो अभी हमको वेट करना पड़ेगा और देखना पड़ेगा कि हम चार परसेंट जब टच करते हैं वहाँ टिक के रहते हैं या फिर चार फोर पॉइंट सेवन हो पहुँच जाते हैं या फिर बढ़ने लगता है तो आगे जाके इसके बारे में और डेफिनेटिव रिप्लाई देने के लिए मैं सक्षम होगा लेकिन आज के तारीख में इंटरेस्टेड कब कम होगा ये मैं कहने के पोजिशन में नहीं हूँ और कहना भी गलत है क्योंकि आप एक अनरियलिस्टिक एक्सपेक्टेशन बिल्डअप करेंगे जैसे कि मैंने और भी कहीं कहा था आजकल क्या हो रहा है कि देखिए मार्केट जो है इवन आप एडवांस इकोनॉमीज को भी ले लीजिए मार्केट और जो बाकी प्लेयर्स है मार्केट में सेंट्रल बैंक कह रही है कि भाई इंटरेस्ट रेट अभी कम हुआ यू नो अभी टाइम है लेकिन मार्केट सोच रही है बाहर के देश के बारे में मैं कह रहा हूँ भारत के बारे में नहीं वो मार्केट लेकिन ये उम्मीद रखता है कि नहीं नहीं अगले तीन महीने में इंटरेस्ट रेट कम कर देंगे तो इंडिया में हमने इसीलिए इंटरेस्ट रेट के बारे में कोई फॉरवर्ड गाइडेंस नहीं देते हैं क्योंकि मार्केट गलत दिशा में ट्रैवल ना करे हमारा जो नेरेटिव है मार्केट का जो एक्सपेक्टेशन है इंडिया में वो दोनों बिल्कुल कन्वर्स कर रही है तो हम कोई गलत स्टेटमेंट देके या कोई ओवर ऑप्टिमिस्टिक स्टेटमेंट देके इंटरेस्ट रेट के बारे में कुछ भी अगर कहे फिर क्या होगा इसका मार्केट में एक अननेसेसरीली एक एक्सपेक्टेशन बढ़ जाता है और वो फिर मार्केट फोर्सेस को बहुत अफेक्ट करता है और इसीलिए मैं कोई फॉरवर्ड गाइडेंस इस बारे में देना नहीं चाहता हूँ हम जो इनकमिंग डेटा है उसको मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं उसके आधार पर हम छः महीने के बाद आठ महीने के बाद एक साल के बाद इन्फ्लेशन का क्या स्थिति होगा वो असेस करेंगे और फिर उसके आधार पर हम निर्णय लेंगे गवर्नर साहब जब आर बोलता है कि इकोनॉमिक मोमेंटम स्ट्रांग है तो पूरे देश को कॉन्फिडेंस आता है इसलिए आता है बिकॉज आर बी आई हैज़ एक्सेस टू डेटा उनके पास पैटर्न हैं तो क्या आप एक कॉन्फिडेंटली बोल सकते हैं कि ग्रोथ का जो मोमेंटम है बारिंग सम एक्सटर्नल स्टॉक्स अगले दो तीन साल मजबूत रहेगा वो साथ होता है आउट होता है ना होता है वही डिबेट है मगर क्या ग्रेथ ग्रोथ मोमेंटम अच्छा रहेगा एंड इंडियंस दे शुड इन्वेस्ट दे शुड स्टे बुलिश बिकॉज ग्रोथ इज रियल एंड ग्रोथ इज ये टू स्टे देखिए ग्रोथ हमारे इंडिया का जो ग्रोथ है वो सस्टेनेबल है अभी वो उस लेवल पे पहुंच गया है जहाँ कि ये सस्टेनेबल रहेगा और एक्सटर्नल चैलेंजेस कोई भी हो वो इंडिया मतलब उसको वी विल बी एबल टू डील विथ इट जितने भी चैलेंजेस आएंगे उसके साथ हम जरूर उसको जरूर डील कर पाएंगे और इंडिया का जो ग्रोथ आउटलुक है उसके बारे में हम बहुत ऑप्टिमिस्टिक हैं कर्नल साहब हिंदी ऑडियंस के लिए आखिरी दो सवाल जो कि एक मास ऑडियंस से कनेक्ट करते हैं हम जब लेंडर्स की रिकवरी की बात करते हैं तो कई बार आम ट्विस्टिंग होती है भाई आप लोन नहीं दे पा रहे हैं मगर जो लेंदार है वो आम ट्विस्टिंग करता है रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ने इसमें काम कर रहा है क्या और कुछ करने वाले हैं वो ये हमने डिटेल गाइडलाइन इशू किया हुआ है कि जो अनथिकल मेथड से जो मतलब स्ट्रॉन्ग आर्म टैक्टिक्स से उसके खिलाफ हमने गाइडलाइंस बिल्कुल साफ साफ गाइडलाइंस इशू किया है और इसको हम मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं जब भी कोई कंप्लेंट्स आते हैं उसमें हम बहुत सख्त से सख्त कदम ले रहे हैं अगर किसी बैंक हो या पट किसी एन हो अगर हम देख रहे हैं कि वो मतलब बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग आर्म टैक्टिक यूज़ कर रहे हैं और जो मतलब अनफेयर मेथड से उसके मतलब उस अनफेयर मेथड्स उस तरीके से वो लोन रिकवर करना चाहते हैं उसके खिलाफ हम एक्शन लेते हैं और किसी भी कस्टमर को मतलब आप रूल्स के बाहर जाके हरेस करने के लिए मतलब रिजर्व बैंक जो है उसको हम टॉलरेट नहीं करते हैं आखिरी सवाल और आई प्रोमिस इसमें लास्ट क्वेश्चन एक मस्ट हैव क्वेश्चन है डिजिटल पेमेंट फ्रॉड्स को लेकर के काफ़ी बड़ा इश्यू अब होने लगा है स्पेशली फ्रॉड्स जो हो रहे हैं क्या उसके लिए आर कर रहा है इसे डिजिटल फ्रॉड्स ओवरऑल अगर आप देखेंगे तो कम हुआ है आप अगर एक साल दो साल पहले की अगर आप 
यू नो चिंता कर, करेंगे तो एक साल पहले जितने न्यूज आते थे न्यूज पेपर वगैरह में आजकल उतना नहीं है तो कॉन्स्टेंटली हम पब्लिक अवेयरनेस क्रिएट कर रहे हैं और जितने एजेंसीज इन्वॉल्व है इस बारे में चाहे वो आर हो या फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्रीज भारत सरकार में फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री हो या होम मिनिस्ट्री हो या जो स्टेट पुलिस और जो सेंट्रल एजेंसीज हैं हम जॉइंटली मीटिंग करते हैं हमारे ऑफिसर्स जॉइंटली मीटिंग करते हैं और इसमें और कैसे क्या क्या स्टेप्स लेना जरूरी है उसके ऊपर वो तो कॉन्टीन्यूसली वो वर्क जारी जारी है लेकिन टेक्नोलॉजी जो है बहुत जोर से इस दिशा में काफ़ी टेक्नोलॉजी और जो फ्रॉडस्टर्स वो तो हमेशा उनका कोशिश रहता है कि लॉ एनफोर्समेंट के दो कदम आगे रहे सो so, लेकिन उस तरफ बहुत इंटेंसिवली हम नजर दे रहे हैं सिर्फ आरबीआई नहीं सिर्फ भारत सरकार के मिनिस्ट्रीज उसमें इन्वॉल्व है जो इन्वेस्टिगेटिव एजेंसीज है और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट के जो पुलिस है वो सब मिलके हम इसके ऊपर और भी क्या क्या कदम ले सकते हैं उसके ऊपर ध्यान दे रहे हैं लेकिन ओवरऑल डिजिटल फ्रॉड्स और जो कंप्लेंट्स अब ओवरऑल अगर देखेंगे तो वो कम हुआ है और हमारा को एफर्ट यही रहेगा कोशिश यही रहेगा कि इसको और भी कैसा कम किया जाए कमर बिफोर आर एप ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एवरी वन सिंस ग्रेटिट्यूड फॉर योर टाइम थैंक यू फॉर पेशेंटली आंसरिंग ऑल आर क्वेश्चन you and your team have made the impossible look very easy india is growing economy is headed in the right direction and thank you for ensuring that indian financial system is stable and we won't emerge stronger with every financial crisis we are truly grateful to you sir thank you very much thank you and uh, may i just say that it has been our effort you see rbi enjoys a lot of credibility in the eyes of the public and uh, constantly internally i drive home the point and it is the effort of the team rbi to sort of focus on improving and enhancing the trust and confidence of the public on rbi as an institution which stands for financial stability thank you sir thank, thank you very much and thank you namaskar